Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of What's Happening in Travel. Uh, this is episode 87, and I'm sorry we've been absent for a little bit, but um, Krishna is not here. Um, he is taking care of family, and we hadn't we have had had a bleh, I can't even speak. We haven't had a chance to do a, um, a show in a little while, but I thought I wanted to come on and just say hello and see how everybody's doing. Um, but my background today is, um, and I forget which bridge this is. <laughs> um, this is one of the bridges in in uh, in London, and <laughs> I think I'm getting old. I'm forgetting things. Uh, let me look up the name of the bridge um, in in London. You know, in, in the UK, there is a lot of these bridges around. And this particular one is the Albert Bridge. Oh, geez, how did I just forget that? I just put it up here too. But um, this one is the Albert Bridge. Um, this one is not as famous as the other bridge, but uh, a lot of these bridges in London cross the Thames. And the reason why I have the Albert Bridge is because... Um, there's been some good news about crossing the Atlantic and the US opening its doors. And actually we'll just uh, go ahead and, and start with that story. Um, so the uh, president of the US, uh, Biden, I think it was yesterday announced that um, the US is opening up the borders uh, between, I guess, international borders. And it's not just, it's not, seems it's not just for US and UK, uh, for UK and Europe. Um, citizens, um, basically, if you're coming in, um, you need to be um, vaccinated. And uh, of course, you still have to do your, your COVID test. Um, typically, it was just, uh, you know, US residents and US citizens. And if you had, um, I guess, um, business or stuff in the US, you you could come back, you could enter. But now um, they're allowing the um, folks from the, you know, I, I try to search for the entire policy, but it doesn't take effect until November. And I couldn't find like the full, the proper verbiage. So whenever I find that, I'm going to attach it to the story so you can read exactly what the verbiage says. Because, you know, um, typically what happens is the news, the news folks, misinterpret it, sad to say that does happen. But in essence, what it's really saying is that, um, uh, let's just see, uh, okay. It'll still require all foreign travelers flying to the US to demonstrate proof of vaccine before boarding, as well as proof of negative COVID-19 tests taken within three days of flight. Um, the rule will also tighten testing for unvaccinated American citizens who will need to be tested within a day before returning to the US, as well as after they arrive. So um, it is gonna be a little more uh, difficult uh, for folks who are not vaccinated. Um, so it's, it's important that everyone, um, you know, your citizen permanent residents read what's in there. Um, so when you're returning, you will have any issues. Uh, one of the things I've been asking people is like, when you travel, how do you find out where to go um, to get vaccinated? Not vaccinated, <laughs> vaccinated is on my mind. Where to go to get COVID test uh, on your way back into the US? And um, it's it's a plethora. Um, there are some websites out there that, do, that does this. Um, or you can search use the search engines to find to find a place where you can go and have your test um but you do require a test to come back into the u.s so you have to make sure you find that out a lot of the airports do have this and um the airlines are very good at putting information on their websites and some of the airlines actually have partnerships with other companies so you can get testing testing done through these particular companies um it is expensive uh, just by this little survey I did of uh, my friends and stuff, um, it could range anywhere from free to like $300. Um, it, it's crazy. 
So um, make sure you check that. The other thing to make sure you do too is that when you travel, in case you get sick abroad, you need to figure out how am I going to pay if I get radically sick and I have to go to the hospital? Um, of course, you know, travel insurance is good to get, but you got to make sure the travel insurance will pay. I was actually renewing my own travel insurance and they don't even cover Texas residents for this, for the COVID uh, thing. And I know that some of them said they had COVID, but then, so then I did it. I got something back that says, um, you know, here's your coverage, but then it didn't mention the piece about being a resident of Texas. So now I'm confused. I'm gonna to have to call them and find out. So please make sure you call and figure out what you what coverage you have because it is extremely, extremely confusing out there. Um, the other thing I wanted to highlight too is that when you're traveling, you need to check um, where you're traveling, the restriction for where you're traveling to and where you're connecting to get to where you're traveling. Uh, my friend of mine reported that they were going up to Norway by traveling through Switzerland, I think it was, and he was in the EU. Um, but if you come through Switzerland, they have specific requirements if you're connecting to other countries. And uh, he said he was basically, he didn't have whatever paperwork it was. Um, and it also depends on the passport that you have. So please, please, please check the travel restrictions before you go anywhere because, uh, and don't ask your friends because your friends are not you. Your friends don't have the same passport as you. The, for your friends may not have the same travel patterns as you do because with some countries, if you've been to other places within the last 10 to 14 days, there's a special, there's a different procedure. So you gotta check, you gotta check. I can't say it more. You got to check. Um, in connection with this, oh, so the UK has also changed their rules. Effective October fourth, um, they basically opened up their borders to Americans. So the pressure is on the U.S. government to do the same, and they did that yesterday. But in essence, when you're coming uh, as a as a U.S. citizen, uh, well, people from the UK, um, how does it U.S. Citizen going into the UK effective October 4th. Um, if you're vaccinated, then you're good to go. You don't have to do the quarantine and all that. You still have to do the day two testing, which you have to arrange before you go. So again, just check the requirements because seriously, all this stuff is um, is changing and is changing rapidly. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, there is talk that, but you know, no, they're still trying to think, are we in the US gonna have um, people to need to be vaccinated before we fly domestically? Um, because, you know, internationally, you kind of have to uh, because the other countries are checking. And if you, if you're vaccinated and you have a you have an easier time, I, you don't have to um, quarantine for like 14 days or anything like that. So the question is, um, are we going to do something like that uh, domestically so people fly? Um, I guess feel safer. Now it's interesting, right? Because um, because of how COVID is, you could technically be flying and don't know that you have COVID. Um, and it's not you're being malicious or anything, but you don't know. So you may test negative um, when you're going somewhere, and by the time you get there, you're positive. Um, Delta actually released some stats, but because you know what Delta used to do is, um, I don't know if they, I think they probably still do it. You could get on a special um, uh, flight. Uh, the flights to Italy, you had to be tested at the time that you're boarding the flight. Um, and then I think you have to get tested when you arrive. And I think out of all the people they did in that test, only like one person tested positive when they arrived. Um, but, you know, they were, I guess, they effectively weeded out all the people who were, who were potentially sick um, by testing people before they got in the flight. So the numbers are there. I mean, it does work. 
Um, I may hate to tell you to, to, to go get vaccinated. That is your own decision. Um, I am not into arguing with people about vaccination and all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's taxing and I just don't have the bandwidth to do all that. So you make your, you make your own decision. But one of the things about flying is that um, uh, people do fly when they're unhealthy. I see it all the time. You get off the flight and your own throat, my throat is itching because I know that I picked something up on the flight and you can hear people just coughing all the way through the flight. So it is not abnormal for people to fly when they are sick before all this um, started. So, um, you know, so, I mean, people people show up at the, at, you know, thank God they have COVID testing coming back into the US because people have been denied boarding because they're sick. Um, and you know, you can just imagine somebody being sick, getting on the plane, sprouting, and it's not just a plane. Cause I think everyone thinks it's just the airplane. It's not just the airplane. It's the whole flying is the whole, is the whole thing. Now, um, I haven't gotten on a plane since last mm, July 16, 2020. I don't want to get back on a plane. Um, you know, want to get out there and do so, but I'm not sure exactly what I want to do yet. And one of the things is that, because everyone has been asking me, right? Um, I enjoy uh, the travel is a journey and I enjoy the journey. I enjoy the interaction with um, everybody, every step of the way. And um, the fact that now you get, on, you get on the plane and it's just so different. Uh, it's just a different environment. Uh, and you go to the lounge, it's a little sterile and um, and you know, and, and trust me, people are still nasty. Um, but a good thing is that a lot of the places, uh, like uh, my friend is on a tour in, in California, and um, you know, they they do temperature tests every time they get on the bus with everybody else. Um, you know, they have to wear a mask. Um, except, you know, unless they're like because he was doing some outdoors and stuff. And of course he doesn't need a mask because he's way outside in the outdoors. But when they're all interacting with each other in the hotels and stuff like that, they all wear their masks, which is good. So it is just the way um, that, that it is. And we just have to learn that this is the way that we're gonna have to learn to travel until um, we've you know, figured out how to manage COVID-19. COVID now, please remember that when you travel like to a lot of the places, like a lot of places I want to go, um, I don't want to travel. I don't travel because I travel, right? I try, I normally have, like I'm working with a brand or I'm going to speak at a conference or something like that. But what I would like to do is um, travel to a lot of the, like I, I have a lot of the Caribbean I haven't done, but a lot of places in the Caribbean um, have high COVID numbers. Uh, one, because people just aren't listening. And two, um, they don't have the vaccine. And uh, the COVAX program, which is done, administered by, I think, the WHO, the WHO, they are um, trying to get you know, enough vaccines to a lot of these countries that just don't have it. So there are people who want to take the vaccine, but they don't have it. And in other countries, people have the vaccine. The vaccine is um, sometimes, quote unquote, spoiling. Um, and um, you know, there are, but but the world is the world is so odd, you know, because the one like in the U.S. you have fires on one coast, and then the next coast you have flooding, and so you know you could use some of that water to out that fire, but it's way across the other side. So, you know, and likewise you have people who are dying of hunger in one place, and then people who are throwing away food in another. And if only as a world we could come up with a way to um, work with each other and figure out how to help each other um, a little better than we are. In other news, the cruise ships are doing well. Uh, Virgin Voyager just docked in New York. Matter of fact, it should be back in Florida. Um, probably by now, it left on Sunday, I think it was. Uh, it's Scarlet Ladies in your ship. And that's the ship where it was actually headed, it actually came to the US during the pandemic, couldn't stop in New York, so it bypassed New York and went to Florida. And then the pandemic continued 
And then, um, so they had to end up going back to the UK. And uh, it's the it's one of the ships that has um, um, HEPA filters uh, in the throughout. And so um, they, you know, went back and I guess fixed things up. And they've been doing cruises around the around the UK just to get the ship uh, ship shape. So it came back across the Atlantic uh, last week. Stopped in New York for a press junket, and people stayed on it. They had parties and stuff like that. I think was Sir Richard Branson was there, and then it headed out to. Um, it's going to Miami, and it's going to be going doing cruises in Miami starting in October. So uh, if you wanted to cruise, look out for things like that. Um, a number of my travel blogger friends they've been doing cruises, and. Um, you know, they have specific procedures. I think one of them was on a cruise that somebody actually got sick, but they had a special place where they quarantined um, that person. And, you know, they, they have COVID, they have protocols. So if you're going to travel, um, I know it's stressful. I know we want to go out and have fun. But, you know, if you want to travel and keep what we have, just abide by the stuff that people that people have. You may not like it, but that's the rules. It's just like if somebody come into your house, and your rule is, please take your shoes off when you come into my house, you take your shoes off, right? You don't walk into their house and then go, well, I'm not taking my shoe off because I just don't believe in people taking their shoe off in their house. It's their house. And so that's their rule. And so you just do it. In your house, you may not have any rules and that's okay. It's your house, right? And if your friends don't like the, the fact that you don't have any rules, then they won't come to your house. If they don't care, then they'll come to their house. So um, just, it's, it's not, it's, I, don't, I don't think it's asking too much for us to get back, you know, to, to some sort of um, normalcy, whatever, whatever normalcy means um, these days. So um, that is kind of all I have. Uh, we are still on Spotify. We are on um, Google Podcasts, um, let's say on Amazon, Amazon, Amazon Podcasts. You can download from pastrider.com slash WHIT. And if you have a question, feel free to send me an email at feedback at pastrider.com. So this is Kerwin minus Kushro. And um, for what's happening in travel, this has been episode 87. Thank you.